Hello, dear students. In this video, I'm going to discuss paper one of the trial exam. So let's begin with the reading section. Well, before solving the questions, let's quickly skim texts A and B. Can you identify their genre and purposes? Take a couple of minutes and try to solve these pre-reading questions. Identify the theme of the text. Number two, identify the point of view of the writer. Number three, what is the tone of the article? Number four, identify some examples of persuasive techniques and explain how are they supposed to make the reader feel, or in other words, their, Im their impact on the reader. Now, if we take a look at text A, we will notice that it's a persuasive article. What is an article? An article is a non-fiction piece of writing. We can find it in magazines, newspapers, books, website, etc. Pay attention to the difference between the article and the report as, as previously explained in class. There are five kinds of articles and each has a specific purpose. Let's take a look at the following to know them. Number one, persuasive articles. Their purpose is to persuade and it's biased or it has a biased point of view. Number two, argumentative. Its purpose is to argue and it's also biased, but it takes the form of a debate. You can use one point that is stronger than the other, or you can give solutions for the against point. Number three, discursive articles. Its purpose is to discuss, it is balanced, it's two-sided debate, and it has one and four, one for and other against, and they are equal to each other. The fourth kind is the formative article and its purpose is to inform. And the last one is the explanatory and the purpose of it is to explain. Now we will discuss some of the persuasive techniques that writers use to convince readers with a specific viewpoint. What are those persuasive techniques? Number one, eye-catchy headline. What is the meaning of an eye-catchy headline? This can take the form of an alliterating words, bold words, or buns. What is buns? What, what are buns? It's a play on words often relying on, uh, on homophones and rhymes. Number two, rhetorical question. A question where the answer is obvious to the reader. It helps them to reach or get a particular conclusion. Number three is imagery. Descriptive language, like using metaphors or similes, is a powerful per uh, persuasive technique. Number four, anecdotes. It means that they are short personal stories that help to illustrate a point. The next one is repetition. Repetition means it can be word, uh, repetition of words or phrases and ideas can be used to reinforce an argument. Number six, rule of three. Writers often apply this language technique by using a pattern of three entities in a catchy way. Number seven, superlative adjectives. Describing words is often used to make the reader feel a particular way about an issue. Number eight, explanation, justification, and evidence. This can take the form of facts, statistics, reviews, or codes of experts to further weight to their argument. For example, we can say that according to the Australian Bureau of Statistics, males are 400% more likely to, and we can complete the sentence. The next technique is emotive language, words that provoke an emotional reaction from the audience. The next technique, number 10, exaggeration. Exaggeration is, is a way that writers often exaggerate or or overstate something to help persuade readers of their viewpoint. Like what? We can say our experts will tell you a million reasons why whatever is good for your health. And the last technique is number 12, inclusive language. What is inclusive language? It's using you, uh, sorry, we or us. Uh, is usually used to involve the readers. For example, we might not like it, but our kids have the right to and complete our One more thing you need to know is the text tone. A text tone means what? 
A tone is the overall feeling of an article. Is it passionate, logical, reasonable, mocking, or humorous? Now, please pause the video for 10 or to 15 minutes, take a look at the questions, then read the texts A and B. Welcome back. Now let's discuss the questions. Well, as you can see, questions 1 to 3 are content ones. You can easily get their answers from the text and check it from the model answer, please. As for question 4, which reads, explain in your own words the three different stages of our lives at which meat is important. Make sure that you are using your own words as, asked, as he asked in the question. Don't just copy from the text. In question five, look at the paragraph beginning fish and seafood are high in protein. Give one exa example of the language technique used and what is the effect the writer is trying to create by using this language technique. As we explained at the beginning, there are many techniques that can be used by the writer to persuade readers. In this phrase, the writer used, try to find it. Now question six, A. Look at the last four paragraphs, give the meaning of succulents, means it, ju it means juiciness, in 6B. Give a quotation that shows that the writer of the text has a persuasive tone. Example, uh, to limit your dietary intake of saturated fats, however, it is, the best, it is best to trim off any visible fact. You may find more quotations in the text, but don't forget to mention the used technique, even if it's not required. 6C is an opinion question. Any reasonable answer will be accepted. In question 7, what is the purpose of the text? He's asking here about the purpose. So, as been discussed, this text is a persuasive article in which the writer is trying to convince readers with the importance of eating meat and fish. Consequently, the answer will be the last choice, which is to inform and persuade us about eating meat and fish. In 7b, what type of text is it? It's an article. 7c, give two features of this text type. Here you can simply mention the main features used in this article, like the ones in front of you. Now let's move to text B questions. Question 8 is a summary question. Please put in mind the following points in order not to lose any mark. Stick to the main points only. Use your own words as much as possible. Correct grammatical sentences and don't exceed the number of the words. In question 9, how has the writer's way of writing changed between the first paragraph and the rest of the text? Here he is asking about the technique that the writer used to arrange the ideas in the text. In other words, how the writer started with a broad generalization, then zoom in on the details, a technique that you can also use in your own writing. Finally, question 10. Look at text A and text B. Name two similarities between text A and text B. This is a comparison question. You need to find out how the language and the techniques in both texts were similar to each other as persuasive article. Now let's move on to the writing section. Our rubric is, you are what you eat. Write a magazine article discussing the previous quotation. Remember the features of persuasive writing. Before writing, you need to think about these points. Number one, the intended audience. Number two, the tone. Number three, the persuasive de techniques that you will use. Number four, the sentence structure. And at the end, number five, the layout. While planning your introductory paragraph, try to create an attractive hook. We can reach this by using a surprising fact or a quote to get the reader's interest. Then, you can give a brief anecdote to make the topic relatable. 
make it short and heavily emotional. For example, you can say, Joseph Nelson was only four when he was first sent to the orphanage. After that, you can use a broad perspective and slowly narrowing in on the topic. You can also do the opposite. Moreover, you can use a, or you can add a rhetorical question to get your readers thinking. Make sure to clearly state your position in your thesis statement. You should use the strongest and clearest language to show your readers what you think and why. Now it's time to move on to the body to the body paragraphs. You can write two or more paragraphs to give more information. Try to use different persuasive techniques and sentence structure. Finally, to sum it all, uh, sum it all in the conclusion. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much.